Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Black and White Gaming's Game Club. I am your moderator, Peter Hoy, with Devon Colbert, aka the Colbert 12, aka the Black Vegeta, aka the Light Skin T'Challa, aka the Light Skin Blade, aka the Real Kratos. <laughs> Did I get hey. them all? I don't know if I got them all. Yeah, you, got them. <laughs> yeah, you, forgot, you know, you forgot Piccolo's older brother, but it's all good. Uh, oh, oh, you mean okay. Gohan? Gohan's real father? Gohan's um, real oh, father. Oh, <laughs> get spoilers up in this bitch. <laughs> uh, and John Longaluco, aka Johnny Bag of Donuts. How's it going, folks? <laughs> we are back with another. I'm gonna call it a season. We're back with another yeah. season of the Game Club. We completed our first game already, which was Metal Gear Solid, The Twin Snakes. You can listen to all of those episodes on any listening platform or on YouTube. Feel free to go check that out. But what the Game Club is, is where we pick a game and then we play to a certain section. And then for that week, we discuss that section. Kind of like a book club. And then we keep on going until the end of the game. So, we have our new game, and here is episode one of the second series. Pete's and that so excited. Is, yes, I am excited because this is the game that I picked for everybody. And it is called... <laughs> it is called <laughs> Deadly Premonition. That is right. Deadly Premonition is a game that originally launched back in February 2010. It was developed by Access Games... And it launched only for the 360. Now, I'm going to do this because I don't want this entire podcast episode to be all of us angry at the port. Uh, specifically one person. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. We, all had our, we all had our issues. Unfortunately, one person had the worst of the issues. <laughs> and that's why at the end of this podcast, before we close it out, I'm going to give John... His own segment called The Premonition of Frustration. <laughs> yep. The Premonition of Frustration, where John's going to have, you know, a solid five minutes to talk about everything he hated about this uh, port. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you stick around until the end because then you get to hear John rip this port apart. Not the actual game, because who knows? What, we'll find out what he thought about the actual game. But for the port, the port, he definitely has some strong feelings about it. So, guys, are you ready to begin Deadly Premonition? I'm Let's ready to it. clown. Let's do it. We're hopping right in. And I want to say, before we even play the game, before the main menu, there's a cutscene that we need to discuss. Mm. Yes. And this cutscene is where... Two little kids and their grandpa. The twins are weird, playing with bugs and just looking around at all the weird stuff and whatnot. And I don't know. They're weird twins, all right? They're not normal kids. <laughs> they look creepy. You look at them and you think the omen. They're I mean, happy so they just, they just <laughs> spotted a ladybug from like six feet away. Even with my glasses, I can't see a ladybug from six feet away, okay? True, very true. And not only that, they were able to pick it up. So you know that they're going to be serial killers when they grow up. <laughs> they move on to the next area and they come across a dead body. And not just any dead body. It's this woman up on a tree, mm. arms spread, hanging like the Lord Jesus Christ Savior himself. <laughs> and she is cut from the sternum down, like just a gaping hole right there and she is done up quite beautifully but quite disturbingly at the same time so guys what do you think of this intro honestly so when i first played it i <laughs> blew right past the intro I didn't even fucking wait for it to play <laughs> and then i was told hey have you seen the intro and i was like oh i didn't even know so i waited and i watched and honestly Kind of gruesome, kind of creepy, kind of weird, kind of messed up. Yes. Very messed up. I would agree with that. Yeah, she has like thorns wrapped around her wrists so that she's just, able to hang on the tree. Don't, and she's don't completely to, in the nude. 
a snake right. crawls up her and like hisses at her titties. And, right. uh... <laughs> Not just that, but like I think the most disturbing thing is the kids are just standing there looking at her. Yeah, unfazed. the grandfather doesn't do anything to like stop the kids no. from no. looking. No. The no. grandfather just walks up and stares. Terrible parent. <laughs> Uh, technically it's not his kids but you know that's fine <laughs> i mean at that moment he's taking care of them so yeah. i'm guessing that he was just as disturbed as them just as shocked and that's why he didn't react because he couldn't take his eyes off of what he was seeing but i but... feel like they're not as shocked because look at their face they're, they're just like if you see their faces they're literally like in awe they're like that's why i Ooh. said they're gonna be serial killers when they grow up because the Wait, kids yeah. just stare with smiles they just stare Wait. up at the body just smiling just and then Afterwards, after the snake does its thing, crawling up her body and hissing, they're over there playing with the bug again. They're just playing with it. Like, they didn't even just see a <laughs> mutilated body in front of them. This is the first that, time they're seeing, yes. they're seeing tits in their life, and that's what's <laughs> happening. Good. The kids do run off and continue playing with the ladybug after they saw that. Like, they saw nothing. Right. And when the ladybug flies off, you get a glimpse of the rest of the town. And the rest of the town, you start seeing different characters crying and well, moping. Yeah. And they're crying in the most dramatic way, like the most overdramatic way, like. This is also the first foray into the music of this game. Like, yes. I almost couldn't take this scene seriously because the music is so bad. <laughs> like on top of it, it just completely like contrasting what what should happen in this scene. Now, I should say that this game, although not officially, you can tell that the creator of this game he goes by the name Sweary sixty five. He was 100% inspired by Twin Peaks. Bye, Moving inspired? forward, you, you go to the main menu, you hit new game, and I want to let you know that you see a scene of a little girl who goes and talks to her grandfather. I want to let you guys know something about this cutscene. This cutscene was not in the original game. This was added for the director's cut. Oh. They added scenes. And this one was definitely not in the original game that I played on the 360. So yeah, have I you played both versions. No, I have not played okay. both versions. Okay. Nice. So this is me playing the director's cut for the first time. I only played the original 360 version. They never show the grandfather's oh. face. They never show his face. Just the little girl talking to him. I want to hear another story. Ah, uh, yes, of course. You've been waiting a long time for this, so how about a special one? This story is very strange and very nasty, but somewhat nostalgic. And then the little girl says, Is it a scary story? It might be. Fuck it's yeah, it is. It's a little scary. Hold but, on, you goddamn teddy bear, bitch. Buck, <laughs> buckle the fuck up. <laughs> you better buckle up and buckle your fucking teddy in two. And she takes John's advice and says, all right, I'm ready. So they turn on the TV for background noise, and he begins to tell her a story. And after that, we meet our protagonist. We don't know who he is yet, but we meet our protagonist, and he is in a red room. He's in a red room. It's a room with trees and red leaves and seeds all over the place there's two chairs in the middle of it and there's these two twin angels sitting in the chairs and those twins look awfully similar to the twins we saw in the first cutscene. but they lean over to each other and they go we're not quite ready for you yet <laughs> please come back Yes, if you try to talk to them, they tell you we are not ready yet. So you can walk around, you can explore this area a little bit. There's a trading card in here. There's a Francis York Morgan trading card. Look hint, here. hint. Hey, that's who we're playing. You can obviously tell from the picture on the trading card. That's who you're playing. Once you tell explore you the room completely. What's that, Devon? I just want to say you'll never forget your protagonist's name. Ever. <laughs> you will yeah. not. After 
You search everything in the room. The kids say, Sorry to keep you waiting. It will start soon. It's about time to get started. The scene changes. It goes black. And you hear our protagonist saying, Zach, Zach, can you hear me? And he says, If you can hear my voice, could you respond? And you are prompted to press a button. So angry. But what do you guys think that means? That you're Zach. Hey! Oh, good. It didn't take me until John streamed to figure it out. So that was good. <laughs> I had no idea. Peter's like, oh, Zach's a pretty cool character. I was like, dude, who the fuck is Zach? Who is Zach? And they're watching John stream. And here it goes. He hits answer. And I said, oh, Peter, where's Zach? And he goes, finally. You realize. I said, what the fuck, dude? The entire time I watched Devon play, he, was, he just kept saying, who the fuck is Zach? I don't get it. Who is Zach? Who are you talking to? you better? Devon, I just realized at this point right now. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said answer. <laughs> That's exactly what it is, dude. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you guys. The first time I played this game, I didn't know who Zach was until like until chapter 7 or episode 2 when I was thinking about the game and I thought, holy shit. He's talking to me! <laughs> it's another game that breaks the fourth wall. But our main character, our protagonist, is driving in the car, and he's talking about a man named Tom who is being treated awfully by his partner, Jerry. Even though they treat each other awfully, they need each other. It's called interdependency. And he is, in fact, talking about Tom and Jerry from the Tom and Jerry show. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yes, he is. <laughs> uh, yes, he is. And you get the crazy opening screen where they stop what's happening on screen and the character's stuck in a certain pose and then they put the name at the bottom of the screen and who they are. It's like a movie. Yeah, exactly. And the music gets all funky. Francis York Morgan, but you can call him York because everyone calls him that. I just realized what his cigarette pack says. His cigarette pack says <laughs> police. 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 York lights up a cigarette, one of his police cigarettes. He's trying to light it, but he can't get the lighter to work. And when he looks up from trying to get it to light, he sees this figure in the road, <laughs> this figure in a red raincoat, and he swerves off the road. Crashes down, and there's t there's these two squirrels <laughs> at the bottom who see the car and jump out of the way, and York's car flips over and lands upside down at the bottom of the hill in the forest. Forget the hash slinging slash, all right? Can we talk about the squirrels and the noise that they made? Because it was a champ, it was a chimpanzee noise that they made. <laughs> it was a monkey noise. Literally, it was the first thing I noticed. I was like, why did those squirrels just make a monkey? Uh, are you sure they weren't chimp monks? <laughs> uh... <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> oh, God. Christ. York gets out of the car, unscathed. There's fire, debris all around. And when York gets out, he does what any man in that situation would do. He lights a cigarette in the pouring rain and somehow is able to get the lid to work, even though it's pouring rain out. And now it's time to play. This is where the game excels right here, baby. Woo! We get to learn the controls. We uh, get to move around. We get to some of explore us some of the world. John, like I said, you have your fuming segment coming up. So I, yeah, yeah, I yeah, know yeah, that. Yeah. I know yeah, that. Yeah. I know the troubles. Just off the original start with just the controls of movement and equipping weapons and all that. What did you think? It took me a minute to get used to equipping the weapons. But once I got the hang of it, it was pretty... It was pretty easy. I do want to say changing my compatibility for like the way the game runs, like changing it to Windows XP, man, what a difference. So much smoother. Uh, you can definitely tell that this is a game from 2010. Yeah. I'd say. It's but that uh, also doesn't mean that much. I just, cause I just want to say Red Dead Redemption, the original came out in 2010. No, I know, but I'm this is a game like, on a budget. This is a B movie game. This is, maybe well, that's I why I like it so much. 
it's Windows just still like it's still it's like uh i don't know i still feel like it shows its age as far as just the the control side it's like it's it's not that like hip fire shooter that you would get in like you know the early 2000s and it's not like your your games that you play now it's this weird in the middle like transition mm-hmm. period of when it you know where, where it came into but Overall, it was <clears throat> not bad. I mean, it's not like it's a terrible way to control the game. Yeah. Right. Sure These are better controls than the original, I just want to say. Okay. They definitely improved on the controls from what the Xbox 360 ones were like. Gotcha. I don't like the durability on the melee weapons, dude. Yes. So let's talk about that. You can pick up a pipe right off the bat. There's a pipe. There's a steel pipe right over in the beginning area. I feel like I picked up a pipe and smoked it. Uh, that's why I'm playing this fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> the durability of the weapons, I will say, of the melee weapons, if you use them on inanimate objects like the boxes or the fences, they don't do much to damage the weapon. But if you right. use that weapon on enemies, it drops down immensely. Like here to like, oh, I haven't yeah. done that. Yeah, oh, so. bro. Yep. This game gives you a neat little feature called unlimited ammo for your main weapon. So, yeah, great. You didn't ever have to worry about not having a gun. I like that. I like that a lot. (laughs) Especially when I figure it out. Like, oh, I have unlimited ammo for my pistol? (laughs) Peter was watching me stream it. He's like, yeah, dude. I was like, oh, good. I couldn't tell you. I had to make make sure you found out. Right. But Devon thought, Devon saw his ammo counter run out. Uh, and when it was at zero, he said, well, I don't got anything there. Oh. And he started using melee weapons, which was still fun to watch because, let me tell you, he laid down the pipe many a time. <laughs> Same thing I know about the fun. Tell <laughs> he can lay down the pipe. Guys, hide your girlfriends because the pipe layer is boxes, here. Baby. <laughs> A.K.A. the pipe layer. What's up, baby? <laughs> Another one. York gets to a certain point down the road and he goes into this state called profiling (laughs) looks down the road and it's called profiling start and this won't make sense guys i'm just gonna let you know this won't make sense until way later in the game good okay all right i'm having fun with it it's him putting the pieces together and as long as you get the puzzle pieces which as you could see throughout this playthrough you can get little pieces that add to your profile that will help him profile and put pieces together even better you continue down the road and you hear a dog whimpering when you turn the corner you hear what sounds like the mauling of a beast what do you see you see a dead dog a dog that has been brutally murdered in the distance you see these legs shuffle across the scene and you don't know what it is you don't know so what do you do you head toward where the legs went why wouldn't you in a game like this I should describe the setting for our listeners. The setting is it's raining. It's very dark out. The clouds are really weird. It's a red sky with blackish clouds that are it's just like the swarming by. Down. Yeah. Like, yeah. John. Yeah. Stranger things all the way. You head inside the shed where you can pick up a can of pickles and then you have to turn on the generator. And when you turn on the generator, something turn- weird happens. York turns around, and there's this figure standing in the corner of the room, just swaying with the wind. As he gets closer, she reaches up and does the Bray Wyatt (laughs) turn around. (laughs) Bray Wyatt walk. The Bray Wyatt walk, where she bends over backwards and just starts reaching toward York. York draws his gun. And then the game teaches us how to shoot. Guys, what do you think of the shooting controls? Uh, Honestly, I don't mind it. As long as headshots, baby. It's whatever. It's like, (laughs) it's not great, but it's not terrible. It's right there in the middle. It could definitely use improvement, but it could also be way, way worse. I hear you. It's definitely not the AAA game that you're going to see. But it works, and it does the job. And as long as you get headshots on these enemies... They are pretty easy. Now, these enemies make weird noises when you kill them. They do things like... Kiss. 
I don't, don't want, want to, to die. die. <laughs> what do you think of the enemies, guys? They're creepy, bro. It's Especially... not really a challenge. No. They're not no. a challenge yet. I, I, I hate the fact that they, A, take so long to fucking die. And then when they fall, they have this like weird purple smoke like comes up and you can't walk through the smoke. Right. Like you get fucking. So There's, like, it's not yes. so bad now. But yes. when you're in hallways and shit and you kill two of them and the smoke's coming up and it, you can't move forward because it's just like blocking it. There's this invisible wall around an enemy that yep. you cannot cross. With that encounter, you get your first profiling segment. It's called the Mysterious Shadow. But you turn on the generator. And you gave electricity to the door we need to go through. York talks to Zach. Can you give me a logical explanation about what that was? Never mind, don't answer. Life is fun because of the mysteries. Right, Zach? So we don't know what these things are. You don't know what these things are, where they come from. And York is not threatened at all. York is totally calm, cool, and collected fighting these things. He's a boss. He's so calm, cool, and collected that when you get headshots, he goes, Bullseye! Amazing! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I love that he talk, <laughs> talks to himself. Well, you continue through all this. There's plenty more enemies that you have to face and little puzzles where you have to turn on generators. This section, what did you think of it? Uh, it wasn't really a challenge. Um, I did notice that you can destroy the boxes and there's sometimes some items in them. Uh, and then you run into your first enemy that, ha that is holding the first weapon. Yes. So yes, you do. Weapons. The enemies can hold weapons, and the first one you come across is holding either a pitchfork or, or a shovel. It's either or. I think it's a good uh, introductory level. Kind of gives you the gist of everything. What the controls yeah. are going to be like. and Yeah, and it, how it's literally life. leading you down a narrow path where you can't get lost. So. Right. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. It's fine. As you're progressing through the section, you come into a shed area that has a lot of tears in the machinery, and it's like someone took a weapon of some sort to the generator and you see an axe in the generator which can only mean that that's what the handler or should i say killer used and you get your second profiling segment it's the machine broken by the axe dun 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 you do another little profiling bit and you get a fuse box and what do you need to do with that fuse box? You need to put it in another generator. Obviously, it's straight up Resident Evil style puzzle. You find something, you got to use it somewhere else. And yeah, this is the first spot I died at. Really? Tell me about that. Uh, I came out of this nice little shack right here and there was an enemy because like when I ran down, like when you come out of the thing all the way at the end, there's an enemy. But when I went in, the enemy started walking towards me. So I went in, I did the cutscene, all that, and when I came out, he was right there on the left side, and he grabbed me, and he started biting me, and I was holding the left fucking, I was, move, you gotta move the left thumbstick, and I wasn't fast enough, and he killed me, so I died. Uh, wow. First death. I was there pissed. You go. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wow, I died. Good. Our first death, our first death. Of the game club, right there, had folks. Be, you heard had it. Had to be me. <laughs> you heard it. You're in now. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay, Devon. I know that you came back and you took that thing out. Oh, yes, and you I progressed did. with the game. <laughs> Murdered it. Down the way, you find the generator. You put the fuse in. It unlocks the next area, and you can progress. When you do, you come through tons of enemies in this area. The section does introduce these weird ooze puddles that these beings can climb out of. If you continue through this section, you have to run down a long path. And when you run down the long path, you come across your first real quick time event. Uh, <laughs> this is how I knew it was a game from 2010. <laughs> what happens is the raincoat killer is there waiting for you and he runs up at you tries to grab you if you succeed you'll roll out of the way and you don't have to worry about it if you fail what happens you get not, another i'm, I'm another, assuming no you get another quick time event too oh to really to get out. yeah because i definitely wasn't expecting a quick time event and, I was <laughs> oh, like, huh? and then, <laughs> then uh, he grabs you throws you in the ground and then you can like do the little like uh thumbstick evade as he goes to like slash at you and you and you roll out of the way Oh, okay. 
This is why we play these games. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets different things. But you run through to the next door and you are done with this section. You get the final profiling segment. It's Red Ivy. And he goes through his profiling scheme in his head. John, what did you equate these profiling segments to? <laughs> so uh, I streamed this game. And uh, each time this came up, I pretended like I was uh, some sort of like fashion photographer. I'd be like, yes, yes, give it to me. Yes. Oh, yeah. Now you're a cat. You're a cat. You don't like your, your mother. Go. Oh, beautiful. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's so good. If you don't understand why he was doing that, it's because... <laughs> When the profiling segments happen, and I didn't describe this earlier, it sounds like a bunch of pictures being taken. Yes, look at me, darling. Yes, angry. Don't no, 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 look at happy. me. Don't no, look at me. Be sad. be sad. Yes, okay. Do it. After he's done profiling, he talks to Zach and says, There's definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zach? My coffee warned me about it. Yesterday morning, the milk I poured in my coffee made a sign. It said, tomorrow you'll arrive in a place that will change your fate. Yep. What do you think of our protagonist so far, guys? <laughs> <laughs> He's out there, buddy. He wears a tinfoil hat. I know he does. I'm, I'm on the fence with this, the whole tone of this game. I don't know. I'm not buying into it yet. <laughs> I feel like at some point it's going to switch up. Like, shit's going to get real. You can't go into this game with a closed mind. If you go into this game with a closed mind, you are going to look at all the weird comments that they say and just think, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It, the problem to me is that it's like, unlike Twin Peaks, where it's definitely, definitely quirky with its stuff, it's like, this is just like going out there to try to be like it and to try to be quirky and try to be like, like offbeat and funny. When it's just like too on the nose a little bit, like I don't know. Oh, they do it so well. They do it so uh, well. See, I don't. I feel like it's like it's either they're really shitty at writing and they meant it to be different and it came out to be awful, or they're trying really too hard to be funny and like. See, I don't think it's them trying too hard to be funny. I think they were trying to be quirky, but it like uh, blew up to the point where they didn't expect it to be like this. I feel like the game's just a big, huge meme, and it's not supposed to be taken seriously. You know what I'm saying? It like is, but it isn't. Like I said, it's like that B movie that you watch on Love a movies. Sunday night, where you say, "I have nothing else to do," and when you're watching it, you say, "This is the most ridiculous thing ever," but it's still entertaining. After you run down the road for 400 yards, you come across a beautiful young woman by the name of Emily. She's the Green Veil. Deputy Sheriff. Well, York introduces himself to her. <laughs> FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Because everyone Why? call because everyone calls him that. <laughs> she asks him a question. If you don't mind me asking, did you walk all the way here? My car broke down. That's all. As if he just didn't fucking barrel roll that thing into the fucking forest. Right. <laughs> and it's on fire currently. Right. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck, dude? Our protagonist definitely knows that she is attractive. Tell Zach. She's easy on the eyes. Definitely worth a trip to the primitive world. After that. Can these people hear him talking to Zach? Or... Yes. I, I can't tell if it's him. Like, even though he goes like that, I don't know if they can hear what he's saying. Right. That's the it's thing. It's probably his conscience. Then we meet the sheriff of the town, George Woodman. First of all, fuck George. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Douchebag. He is, as York would call him, the king of this area. <laughs> the sheriff basically throws his dick on the table <laughs> and says, this is my size. And he's very authoritative, saying, Don't know how to say that. But, uh, really don't need your help. Even after York tells him, Call me York, he calls him, <laughs> I hope you'll come to appreciate that, Agent Morgan. Ooh. York can't <laughs> believe it as he turns around and stares at, at the sheriff. And you know that there's some tension. Oh, tension yeah. between these two alphas. Do you think uh, George shaves his 
pubes and a fucking handlebar mustache. <laughs> a little cocky handlebar mustache. Yeah, you look good down there, don't you? <laughs> yeah, oh, this guy's God. a douchebag. I didn't like him right from the start. Yep. All right, what, what do you guys think of Emily and, and George? Uh, she could get it. <laughs> uh, but George, I don't like George at all. Yeah. I don't. He's just annoying. He's pompous. He's an ass. He's an asshole. I don't blame him for not liking York, but uh, he's also just a dick. Perfect. Perfect. I love all the characters in this game. George is definitely a dick, but Emily's great. York's great. George is great. They all have their own individual characters. I like that about this game is that these characters are very unique, but they all get in the car. They drive off. They're going to drop York off at a motel. And George is going to send someone to get York's belongings. And then we have finished the prologue. Let's finish the prologue, boys. I just want to know why they had to back the car up before driving forward. They were nowhere close to that. They were also on the road already, to which they could have just <laughs> driven forward. <laughs> Very true. Well, we hit chapter one, guys. Hey. And what's cool is that in between episodes, you get the cool previously during the investigation. So if you're loading it back in, the game will let you know what you've done already. I do like that about the game. It adds a TV show vibe to it. Beginning of chapter one, we get another cutscene of the little girl with the grandfather. And then the game shifts focus and we are back to playing as York in the red room. And in the red room, you can walk around, pick some things up. But when you walk through the door, you come across this little kid. And this little kid is staring at you. And then all of a sudden, there's one of those mysterious shadows in the distance. And the kid tells you to hold your breath. They can't see you if you hold your breath. Guys, how did this part work out for you? Uh, I just tried to see like what would happen if you don't hold your breath, and then you, I figured out what happens. You know, you <laughs> have to start over. I just want to try it out because obviously, I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> but no, nah, this was easy. I just wanted to see what would actually happen if you didn't hold your breath, and it's obvious. Yep. You just have to start over. Yeah, so I went through it as a quick time event as it has been and just hit the button versus holding it <laughs> and i died i had a redo i was like oh i gotta hold it okay <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> yes yeah, so you have to hold the button if you hold the button you can sneak by the weird mysterious shadow monster that took fucking forever to go it was a very me. extended scene oh it was God. a very extended scene uh, Jesus, i get it <laughs> It leans back and gets all in your face and just stares at you and they don't move. <laughs> breath probably stank. You need a tic tac. If you don't hold your breath, the mysterious shadow grabs you and chokes you to death. Yep. And then you have to start over. But when you do, the kid opens the door, you walk through, and York wakes up in a hotel bed. Oh, hey. yeah. Where's Pretty nice hotel room, I might add. Very, very, very nice bed. hotel room, huge, right? Huge bed. Double, That's definitely double, like a yeah. It's a double king size bed. Double king, room too. The California king. Hey, California hey. king. When he gets up, he talks about the symbolism in his dreams. He mentions the forest of red trees, red leaves, strange dolls, twin angels. But the weirdest thing about his dream, what was that? It was the child. And he says, "I swear I've seen him before. Just can't remember. He'll probably come back to me." I need to get coffee. He gets changed, and then you can explore the room if you want. You can find out that you can, sh you find out that you can shave if you want, or you can grow a beard. Oh. But the main objective is to get to the cafeteria area. And when you get to the cafeteria area, you meet a new character. <laughs> That's right, Polly Oxford, the yeah. hotel yeah. owner. Polly Oxford. Just Polly is fine. You can't stand up straight. <laughs> She can't. She walks hunched over with her hands behind her back, and she waddles. She waddles around. <laughs> they sit at opposite ends scenes. of this huge table. <laughs> it's like Batman, eighty eight, eighty nine, right there. <laughs> What's great about this scene is if if you admire her meal, the conversation gets going, and York gets to a point where he he's trying to talk to her, but he has to shout across the table. Because when he says, Aside from you and me, there seems to be no other guests or workers around. Polly replies with, What's that? 
the salt's in that white shaker there. This goes back and forth as he's trying to talk to her about the place. He still can't hear her because he's on the far side of this table. And he gets to the point where he says, Polly, it might help to hear you better if you could sit a little closer. And Polly straight up rejects him. Oh my, Mr. Morgan, you're embarrassing me. So early in the day, too. I think I'm a little too old for you. And I still love my departed husband. May God rest his soul. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm fine over here. And when they do the wide shot, you can tell how long this table is. And it's just right. a really funny scene. I didn't hit A quick enough, and it pretty much ended it right there. Oh, it ended the scene <laughs> right away? <laughs> yeah, he just yells like... Get me coffee. Shake or something. <laughs> <laughs> Polly ends the conversation. And she says, I'll bring you out some coffee. And York says, I have to warn you, though. I am very particular about my coffee. The very best you have, please. York gets his coffee. He pours the milk into the coffee. Oh my hey, God. you get a button prompt at this point, guys. Did you activate the button prompt? Yes. The button prompt is called, look with interest. <laughs> and if you do that, York sees something in the coffee. What does he see, guys? FK. <laughs> FK, baby. In the coffee. <laughs> Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. In the coffee. I knew I could count on it. Never fails. I don't know how you guys can't like this protagonist. Like, this guy is the man. So, like, over the top. It's just so <laughs> So, that's a hint toward the investigation, I guess, right? Could be. Yep. Who knows? F. K. Could it be Francis York? FK with the beginning and end letters. Could be. Could be. Could it be fuck? fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Could it be initials? Mm. Mm. Guys, there's so many possibilities. I know. What oh. could it fucking be, Aunt Polly? So I want to let you all know, next time you have a cup of coffee that you pour cream or milk into, look to see what it tells you. After you drink the coffee, you can leave the hotel, and that ends chapter one. Chapter one is... Done. Guys, what do you think of the chapter so far? Uh, short and sweet. Very yeah. short and sweet. I like it. Pretty, pretty I like digestible. It. I like the pace that it's going at, right? You can essentially take everything in, right, in each chapter. And, like, it's, it's very easy to, like, go back and review it, too, right? Yep. So I like it. I like the way it plays out. It doesn't feel like it's really dragging or anything right. like that, which is good. It's like, <laughs> what? I like that the cutscenes can be short and sweet, too. <laughs> oh, man. York leaves the hotel, and there's a police car right outside with a note on it that says, Don't be late from, George, from Sheriff George Woodman. Ass hat. And so now you guys can drive a car. <laughs> Before you can drive the car, That's what York it. tells Zach that he can't believe they left the keys right on the hood. You know what this place has values this town has what the country needs values what do you think of the driving controls oh it's no it's no, it's no racing game it's no it's, gta let me tell you what it's no midnight club yeah no. yeah no this shit, is, <laughs> this shit is wrong. bro honestly i started using my signals what game there's no other game that i know of <laughs> That lets driver. you use signals. Driver. No. See, never he's like, I don't. He's one. like, I don't. Heard, I've never heard of that <laughs> game. <laughs> never, never. So when it says signal, let me tell you what I've been using my signals. Okay? <laughs> when he tries there. to turn, when he does like the huge wide turn because the car refuses to just turn normally. Facts. Worst turning radius ever. Facts. Not just that, but I find it easier to drive in first person than third person. I agree uh, with that. I agree with that. I find it way really? easier to control in first person than I do mm -hmm. in third person. My favorite thing to do is to <laughs> drive it really fast and then pull the e-brake. That's fun. John was moving this car in ways <laughs> I didn't know it could be moved. All right. Awesome. <laughs> I will yeah, give this game up. kudos because they give you so much control over the car. You can turn on blinkers. You can turn on wipers. You can use yeah, the horn. You can use the back. sirens. And I'm like... Why are you giving us so much control? What's the point? <laughs> yeah. But it's cool to have. It's cool to have. It was like it was easy to program, so they're just like, yeah, fucking throw it in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
after you figure out the driving controls, you have to drive over to the sheriff's office. And as you do so, you can get, do these in-car conversations, these in-vehicle conversations. If you decide to do them, you get a little bit deeper into York's character. He knows his films. And he knows his films to the point where he says, this movie was made in this year, directed by this person. And the sequel to that was this, but they didn't have the same people. It was different directors or different casts or different studios behind it. And they're fun conversations to listen to. I highly recommend you guys give it a shot. If I was surprised that they it. referenced a lot of like actual real movies. Oh, right? yeah. I thought it was cool. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. American Owen. Werewolf in London, I think was yep. another one. American Werewolf in London, exactly. We make it to Sheriff's Department, and you meet a new character. My oh, favorite. Man. You like meet. Called the, uh, the, the Deadly Premonition Otacon. Like to... <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not lying. This is literally who I thought of when I first met him. Thomas McLean. We're dubbing him the Otacon of Deadly Premonition. <laughs> he is totally Don't... asleep. He's totally asleep at the counter when you walk standing in. Standing up. Yeah. Standing asleep, up. Asleep, standing up. He hears York come through and then runs over to York to greet him. And this run <laughs> is priceless. It's, it's how that, he runs everywhere. <laughs> yes. It's how he runs everywhere. It's like legs coming up to like his left leg coming up to the right. It's I apologize for whoever I'm going to offend by saying this, but it's a sissy run. It is yeah. a sissy run. There's no other way to describe run. it. Dainty yeah. run. It's a dainty run. There we go. It's a dainty run. <laughs> apologize. Like a, that, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got you back, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> he runs like a bitch. <laughs> Apologies to everyone I just offended. I'm sad, but please, his tie. Look at his please tie. keep listening. His tie oh. is super short. His tie so doesn't short. even reach his waist. Doesn't even reach oh. his belly button. What a loser. <sighs> He comes up to you. He salutes you every time, <laughs> everywhere you go. And here we, go. Uh, here we go. Thomas McLean, the sheriff's assistant, he's broken up about Anna, but York thanks him for grabbing his belongings out of the car because that's the man who did it. That's the man who brought York's suitcase over to the hotel. York asks, Can I have a look at Anna's file now? Yes, of course. The sheriff told me to let you through to the meeting room, but... I've lost the key to the cabinet where the files are. Why don't you take a look around while I go look for it? Does Thomas look for keys? No. No. Hell no. What this section is, this section is for you to explore the sheriff department and find the keys. There's a fun side quest in here, I must say. I don't know if you guys were able to do the side quest. Oh, uh, I did. <laughs> but it turns out that you can come across Sheriff George Woodman and he is working out. He's doing some squats. And York asks him, do you always work out? Sheriff Woodman tells him, I haven't missed a day since I started in high school. Now that's impressive. Remind me to get more exercise, Zach. But I can't do my full routine today without Arnold. I haven't seen Arnold around since yesterday. Arnold. He's a training buddy of mine. His partner Sylvester misses him too. Uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> oh, my. <God. laughs> I'm so mad I missed this. Anyway, you know, you gotta do your squats if you don't do it, man. The whole workout regimen is done. So you can get your first side quest right here from Sheriff George Woodman. What I didn't know is that if you walk into Sheriff Woodman's office without him in there, what do you get, John? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is it where he talks about the gun? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he walks in and he talks, he's like, oh, you got a, you know, deer on the wall with, uh, with a hunting rifle. You'd never see a hunting rifle in the, in the, uh, a police station back in the city. Blah, blah, blah. It's like something <laughs> stupid like that. He even ends it off by saying, I wonder if you'll let me shoot the gun. <laughs> <laughs> and then Woodman walks in <laughs> and starts doing the squats. <laughs> He's awkward. So you can explore the station, and throughout the station, you can find several different types of squirrel keys. Yep. Devon, don't even say yep because I know you only found two, and you were able yep. to get it in two tries. 
Yep. Whereas John and I found all five keys in there. Wow. And we'll get to that in just a moment. And got that's, it on the fifth try. That's <laughs> yeah. crazy. What luck. Yeah. I'm a man. I will say that the, uh, I did find out in this uh, portion of the game that if you sprint and enter doors, it is much quicker <laughs> than yes. just going going really? through and opening it. Yeah. Yep. If you sprint and like, run through a door, like he'll it. bash through it yep. as opposed to just opening it slowly and looking. Nice. Just do it. Just do it. It's so much quicker. In the midst of finding these keys, you'll come across a dumbbell with a name tag on it. Arnold. All you got to do is bring that dumbbell back <laughs> to our good friend George and you will complete the side quest. And I found the dumbbell before I, I even got the side quest. <laughs> Depending on where you stop him, he has a different animation, by the way. If you stop him while he's sitting at his desk, he'll do some arm curls with Arnold. He'll pull it away and then give you, give you the trading card as the reward. He gives you a trading card as a reward. Oh, nice. Then we're even. So don't even think that I owe you about anything. I was like, dude, really? <laughs> okay. I have to go back and do this. If you hand him Arnold while he's standing up, He'll do some curls. He'll hand you the Arnold and Sylvester trading card. And then he'll have both, that's right, both Arnold and Sylvester in his hands. And he'll tell you he doesn't owe you anything because he gave you a trading card and he will pump away. I mean, what are those like, like 35, 40 pound <laughs> like dumbbells? He still has man boobs. That's one of the things you can do in the sheriff's department. Another thing you can do that I didn't know, I had no idea, because I did the same thing John did, and I walked away from the area without continuing. Uh-oh. Devon, I'm going to let you take this one, because you're hey. the only one who did this. Hey, if you go down into the shooting range, you can actually shoot at the targets, and doing so drops you items oh. if you shoot the targets. Each Some one, are, right? Not each one. It's I think the last two doesn't drop you items. I'm pretty sure. Oh, the last two see, because like, I shot the second to last one. Yeah, I don't think they drop you items because <laughs> I tried. <laughs> but like the first like five or six, they'll do it. They'll drop items for you, and they're like, some of them are bullets, like ten millimeter bullets. Yeah, yeah. auto bullets and stuff like that. Uh, some some's food, some's first aid. But yeah. I said the same thing, John. I was watching Devon, and, and when I saw him shoot one of the targets and an item dropped, I thought, damn, I was shooting them. <laughs> I didn't shoot them enough. <laughs> I literally shot the second to last one. And I was like, ah. Uh, Down there in the basement area where the shooting range and the cells are, you can find a couple more keys. With all the keys, you can go up to Thomas McLean, and you can try to hand him the key to the cabinet. He says he's looking for a southern flying squirrel. Uh, Do any of the keys actually say a southern flying squirrel? No. no. They're the actual names of what these squirrels are or these chipmunks or whatever. Or maybe not even the actual names. No. I think no, it's no, actually it's just, just because. Just, yeah, it's a description. It's like a squirrel or it's like yes. pointy-tailed squirrel or something yes. like that. This is hilarious because I literally got it the first try. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I had to go through. So I had to go through each one. I had to go through each key until I hit the last one. And it's not just you hand him the key and he says, "No, that's not it." You have to go through this whole thing where he says, "You found the key." I hope so. Thomas looks at the key and then goes, "Ah!" ah. <laughs> <laughs> looks at it for like fucking. 10 seconds like <laughs> okay and then he tells you about the squirrel in a condescending way he's like uh, dude, this is like a sugar glider <laughs> uh uh no this is a sugar glider sorry wrong key the sugar glider is a small gliding possum it has shorter hair and a longer column like tail you can really see its muscle definition on this image can't you but we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now Zach, can you tell these things apart? 
Did you know the sugar glider weighs to you know blah, 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 native to the North America? It's like Shh, you fucking asshole. <laughs> <sighs> and then he reinforces the point. We're looking for a southern flying squirrel. As if like you, you say it to say you're not reading the the description of the key correctly, which <laughs> doesn't give any fucking <laughs> indication of what it is i should have googled what a southern flying squirrel looks like and just got that it's funny because Uh, i'm pretty sure the key is the one that you found in the cell i think it's the one in the cell oh because there's one in the cell and there's one in the range well devon tell us which two did you pick up all right yeah i picked up the one in the cell and the one in the range yeah so it's one of those two 50 50 shot if you do that well when you finally give him the right key he gives you an o face and he says, awesome, go into the meeting room. I'll meet you in just a bit. Because he's going to grab the files and bring them there. When you and go into York, the... Then York goes, well, Zach, we just got here, and we've cracked a big case already. Already. <laughs> <laughs> I like, forgot dude, about that. You just found the key, bro. That was, <laughs> that was a case for me and John. <laughs> yeah. 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 In there, they read through the files. You find out Anna was 18. She just graduated high school. She wanted to become a model in the city. She worked at A&G Diner. You find out Anna's father died in an accident at the lumber mill when she was a child. She lives with her mother. And all this time, York is smoking a cigarette while sitting over a biscuit. He picks up the biscuit, puts that out... looks a lot like a donut. <laughs> it looks a lot like a donut. Looks a lot like a donut. A donut, uh, a biscuit. Uh, <laughs> a bonut or a discuit? A bonut. I like a bonut. A, a, a bonut. A, a discuit. Bonut I like that one too. A bonut. He's standing over a bonut. Sounds like you say boner, but in like a weird accent. <laughs> Even the pop I, in a little uh, bonut? He's, he's got a bonut. <laughs> he smashes out the cigarette on the plate, and Emily and Thomas are disgusted by his manners. He takes a bite of the bonut. <laughs> And he is in love with it. This is a good biscuit. I've never tasted a biscuit this delicious. This is one of my favorite lines from York. Because Thomas says, I bake them myself. <laughs> and York replies in the most condescending way oh, yeah. possible. But with a comp, like, it's a compliment, but it's a condescending compliment. Oh, and yeah. he says, mm, that's amazing. What are you doing in law enforcement? They're very particular about biscuits, I'll have you know. The balance of milk and butter you've achieved here. Oh my! <laughs> like you <laughs> shouldn't be laugh. here. <laughs> I would have if I was Tom. If I was Thomas, I would have looked at him and been like, "What are you doing in law enforcement?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sheriff Dick comes into the meeting room and says, "We're going to check out the autopsy. We're going to use the car outside." And York, you can come with us, but I'm hoping you won't slow us down. I that. Up. Is the end of chapter two, baby. We have one chapter left. One chapter to go. I love it. When you get outside, they tell you the hospital's way too far away. You have to drive. And York says, all right, I'll drive. And Sheriff Woodman ain't having none of that. He says, you don't need to drive. (laughs) All right? You're not going to be in town long. You don't need to know how to get around. (laughs) Okay? Eventually, Woodman gives up. And says, I'm going to keep an eye on you. They get into the car. Woodman is still being a dick. Agent Morgan, get us there quickly, but drive within the speed limit. Just because you have a badge doesn't mean you can drive like a maniac. George, what are you, his mother? And even Emily stands up for York at this point. York looks over with that sly expression like, ooh. She, she wants my bitch. I want your bitch. This bitch is fine. And then you can drive to the hospital and you can have conversations with Sheriff Woodman and Emily. They talk about a scar for a little bit. He says it was caused by a problematic woman, which he also says women are crazy, like in the beginning of the game. John's like, point, point, Not point wrong. for York. Did I say I like this game? I didn't like this game. <laughs> Dude, I got so lost in this part. Well, I fucked up because. I was trying to get them talking, so I was smashing A as I was backing up, not realizing that when I backed up and came to a stop, A gets you to get out of the car. 
And then when you get out of the car, they're like, oh, fine. We'll go ahead. You meet us there. <laughs> and then they um... fucking leave and you're just by yourself. And I'm like, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> everyone gets a different experience when you make it to the hospital they have another conversation out in front yeah i also didn't get this cutscene, by the way <laughs> yeah different cutscene. <laughs> yeah so apparently there's two different cutscenes you can get here i didn't know that there was another cutscene that you can get outside the yeah, hospital i'm opening up pete during a whole new experience of this game <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the cutscene that devon and i got they talk about the town and that the town used to be really energetic, and there used to be tons of people, but town lost its fever, and a lot of people left. John, why don't you explain the cutscene you got? Yeah, the cutscene I got is I drive alone to the hospital, I get out, and I go to enter the hospital, only to immediately get bitched at by uh, Sheriff Dickhead. And he's like, ah, you didn't even wait for us. You're just going to go in. And, <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay. He's like, you should have come to us and asked us to, to go in with you. I was like, all right, dude. Like, I'm, stop yelling at me. This is annoying. <laughs> That's it. That's pretty much it. That's hilarious. <laughs> Nothing crazy. It's just them bitching at you about not waiting for them. Oh, my girl. <laughs> it's okay. Because when you walk inside the hospital, you meet a new character, Freckly <laughs> Fiona. Fiona, hi, my name's Franklin Fiona. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, guys, I'm reading a book that's just like the town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Funny enough, guy. that's exactly what happens. So <laughs> she automatically knows that you are an FBI agent. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. But how did you know I was FBI? <laughs> Easy. None of the police in this town wear cologne. Fiona pulls out a book, and York asks her, What are you reading? It's a recent bestseller mystery. It's set in the U.S., a small, traditional North American town close to the Canadian border. A peaceful, traditional place. However, that peaceful town is shattered by a terrible crime, the murder of a local girl. And that incident causes grief and sadness to everyone in town. But everyone feels the seditious, heinous, evil still lurking, alive. Yes, much like the situation right now here in Greenvale. Fiona, don't say that. <gasps> it's her. <laughs> this whole game is just a I was mystery. waiting. I was waiting for one of you guys to be accusing. None of you guys on your stream were like, it's her, or it's him, nah. or it's her, nah. it's him. Nah. <laughs> no accusations. I was actually really shocked when watching it's your streams fucking, that nobody actually... It's Scooby-Doo mystery, bro. <laughs> the killer is... Frankly, Fiona. <laughs> I would have gotten away with it for you rascally kids. And your goddamn Zach. You find out that the person you're looking for, Dr. Usha Johnson, is in the computer room. To which York goes, a computer room? Yeah, like it's the fucking... <laughs> in a hospital? In a hospital? It's a computer. <laughs> <laughs> What's a computer room doing in a hospital? And Frankly, Fiona tells him, it's where all the employees use the computer. <laughs> Everyone in this game is just an asshole. <laughs> you walk over to the computer room, and in it, there's a puzzle waiting for you. Fuck this part. There's what? a puzzle dealing with chess. It's the easiest puzzle in the world, <laughs> unless you read too much into it, with Devo which Devon and I both did. Fact. Really? Yes. yes. Okay. So, the puzzle... On the computer that you have to solve reads, King passes Rook, meets Bishop, Knight takes a pawn to the Queen. All you have to do is put in the puzzle pieces in the puzzle exactly the way it reads out. However, Devon and I both did the same thing where we put the Rook first because the King passed the Rook mm -hmm. and, met, and met the Bishop to which the Knight takes the pawn. To the queen so i see where you guys are coming from and yes. i <clears throat> when i first touched because i was going to move the king right and then i touched the king and it just input it into the computer i was like oh i think it's just going straight through <laughs> not having to do anything i looked around and then i just decided i'm gonna put it in 
exactly as it says, and it worked. Uh, Devon spent a little more time in the room. Go ahead, Devon. <laughs> bro, I literally sat here, right? So I did it the first time, right? I do it the, like I put the rook first, and then the the king, and then the bishop, and then knight takes pawn to the queen, right? That last that last sentence, easy, right? It's self explanatory. Didn't know that the first part was just fucking self explanatory either. <laughs> How the fuck? I forget how I did it the other way. I did it a separate way too, and it was wrong. And I was you like, did. <laughs> was like, okay, I don't understand. So then I finally put it in the right way, and I was like, well, that's stupid. Why did they have to solve this puzzle? Well, Dr. Usha Johnson left a riddle for them, and they had to solve the puzzle. York, Emily, and Sheriff Woodman had to solve the puzzle to find out where Dr. Usha Johnson is. Which I feel like. He would stick to even if there was a medical emergency going on. They'd be like, "Doctor Usher, we need you to stat." And he's just like, "Bitch, I put a fucking clue in my computer room. <laughs> you gotta find me first. You right? gotta find me." <laughs> Sheriff Woodman gets all gets his panties in a bunch over this puzzle, but York says the solution to the puzzle is simple. And he, because after they complete the puzzle, they get a code message that says. The doctor awaits below with the deceased. And they basically means that he's waiting in the basement with the body. And York tells Sheriff Woodman that, and Woodman gets all pissy. You have to take that key card that you get from the puzzle, head on down to the basement, and you finally meet Dr. Usha Johnson. You meet the coolest doctor that you're ever going to meet in the history of all doctors, Dr. Usha Johnson. <laughs> Him and York get all buddy-buddy, talking about the puzzle. Again, Sheriff Woodman gets in a hissy fit and says, we got a body to look at. So they look at the body, and you start learning about the body. From the onset of rigor mortis, the stiffening of the muscles, the time of death is estimated to be between 20 and 2200 hours. Uh, that's still quite early for such a crime to take place. Note that there are two exterior wounds, pressure marks around the neck, and a long cut running from chest to abdomen. Blood marks on her right hand tell us she was gripping something round in her right hand. Her skull is also fractured, but that is unrelated to the cause of death. It probably happened to her after she was killed. Now, I first thought death by suffocation due to the marks on her neck. But after further investigation, I now have a different conclusion. The direct cause of death was loss of blood from the wound. Which means she was cut up while she was still alive. Yes, uh, a sharp knife was used. It was inserted beneath the sternum and then quickly sliced downwards. The excessive loss of blood from her internal organs is what actually killed her. Her nails are clean, and with no skin cells from the attacker, she also doesn't appear to have been bound nor badly beaten. She was apparently killed without resistance. The most tragic thing, however, was that she was unable to speak her story to anyone who could hear her cries. The perpetrator cut out Anna's tongue. Ooh, yep. passionate. Yep. Passionate. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Passionate AF. <laughs> now, the doctor goes on saying that the killer most likely has a traumatizing past with women. Cutting out the tongue suggests a very lonely individual. And then he says, uh, A case in Seattle in 1985 was much like... Usher, please limit your report to your findings as a doctor. Criminal profiling is my job. And York Loses says, his yeah. mind. <laughs> <laughs> York, thug life moments him. Give it to me, Devon. Do it. 
Fuck the police coming straight. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Because you just got served, homie. Usher's like, yeah, yeah. All right, you're right. You're right. Here you're you right, go. Yeah, okay. You're wrong also. I'll tell you yeah. how to be a doctor. Yep. Motherfucker. <laughs> York straight up tells the doctor he's wrong because Usher mentioned that Anna was drugged and didn't know what was happening to her. And he says, no, Anna knew everything that was happening to her. Right. So she was drugged in a way where she could feel and see everything, but she couldn't move. He asks Emily, what time did it stop raining? <laughs> and she says, I had to be 1 a.m. That's the time I finished watching a movie. And he asks her, what movie? American Werewolf in London. And he says, hmm, the rain stopped around the time Blue Moon came on. Because <laughs> that's the credit song. <laughs> You're allowed to examine Anna's body. So you can look up and down her body and observe different areas. Once you finish observing all the areas, the yeah, cutscene continues. Fucking look at her falcon feet. <laughs> fucking talons that she's got there. <laughs> I was like, fuck, dude. Cut your damn fucking toenails. Cacaw. Cut your nails, for God's sake. <laughs> I should say... That the reason why he was asking when the rain stopped is because even though it was raining, she had tear marks on her, which those tear marks wouldn't be there if it were raining. So you find out that the perpetrator had stayed with her for at least two hours until it stopped raining after he injured her in such a way. Asha Johnson says that the tongue had to have been removed with a blunt object, almost like it was chopped off. Asha, are you a passionate man? Well... Not particularly, I mean, but I am man enough should the moment call for it. George, how about you? I'm very passionate, yes. Especially when it comes to women. But I don't see what that has to do with anything. George, the perpetrator is just like you. He's passionate about women. He's a passionate kisser. This was a kiss of death. Ah, the perpetrator bit off Anna's tongue. Ooh. Uh. <laughs> Never eaten cow tongue before? No? I have. Yeah. Delicious. <laughs> After the tongue revelation, York reaches with some tweezers oh. into Anna's throat. That's right. With the, most, with the most disgusting <laughs> noise ever. Codename Deep Throat is back in the vein <laughs> of, <laughs> of York. <laughs> Reaching into Anna's throat with tweezers, and he pulls out a red seed. <gasps> and once he does, he tells everyone, This case is now under the jurisdiction of the FBI. I'm assuming command. I'll need you to assist me in the investigation. Boom. Boom. Throws his dick on the table and says, I'm leading this investigation now. And he starts throwing out all the red seeds from other murders that he's investigated. I'll say this was a little bit of shock because I was like, oh, yeah, there's the bag. And then he's like, oh, and another one and another <laughs> one. <laughs> Straight DJ Khaled with it. Which is... <laughs> another one. I did notice that there's three in each bag, mm -hmm. which makes me think there's going to be two more of these seeds that are going to mm -hmm. pop up. Somewhere. Mm. Afterward, York says, I'll explain more about this later. I'm going to leave. I can't stand it down here anymore. I'm going to smoke a cigarette. Sheriff Woodman says, all right, we'll catch up with you. We got to fill out some paperwork. And then York, with his dick still on the table, <laughs> just oh, wiggles yeah. it around a little more and tells Usha, Bishop takes queen. His rook takes your queen. Then your knight takes rook. And checkmate. Right, bro. I literally said it. I was like, dude, he literally looked at the computer for probably three seconds and figured out the fucking move. Agent York is the man. And then Usher Johnson runs over frantically. Yes, Usher Johnson runs over, puts the move in, and he gets his first victory in the Grandmaster ranking. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's against the computer. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> we head on outside of the examination room. And they're back. <laughs> they're back. The roots. Die. The roots. <laughs> the mysterious shadows 
They're all over the hospital, and you have to fight your way back to the lobby. The mysterious Ivy is there, and you have to fight your way back. Guys, what did you think of this section? This section uh, was great until I got to a certain part. <laughs> Me too, buddy. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I think... I think... I w- and I could be... I'll reserve the right to retract this later. But I enjoyed these parts less than I enjoy the actual like story mm-hmm. murder parts. I wish it was kind of just like more straightforward with that. I don't know. I maybe there's reasoning behind this and it will make it and be like pretty cool. But I don't think these are that compelling at going through um as of yet. And it's and maybe the, the enemies will get you know harder or they'll be a little bit different or I don't know, it just seems like this is added in to be like, oh, you can shoot things and, and do stuff. It's like, I don't know. Mm. It's fine. It's not terrible. I just don't enjoy as much as the other other part. I hear you. I hear you. I enjoy the sections, but like you say, they are very bizarre and they come out at random. So I totally understand what you're saying, John, because yeah. you're in this town. You're trying to investigate this murder. And then all of a sudden, these weird moments start happening like Anna running through the hospital halls in her red dress and you just sit there thinking to yourself what is happening why is this happening I don't get it who knows it could be like oh like he's insane and like this is or like this is his way of like processing the the uh the investigation and trying to figure out the murder like you know it could be something that could turn it to be something different it's just like in the moment right now I'm just like whatever i don't want well, to die i don't want to die <laughs> i do have to say the first time i played this game i thought the enemies were super creepy this time around not as much because i played through the game before they are no creepy. Yeah. dude when they do their like stutter like going forward like the shift yeah. and they yeah. get toward you really quickly yeah yeah, yeah. definitely that, creepy that gets me a little bit i'm like oh, i get i get goosebumps bro i'm playing i'm like huh, huh. I'm like rushing shots and shit. <laughs> well, I was a sharpshooter at this point, though. I was fucking hitting I was John Wick in it, bro. <laughs> there are two moments in this section that I do want to talk about a little more specifically, and that is we come across an ambush where you walk into this room and there's something fluttering underneath the blanket on the uh, on the hospital bed in the room. And okay, yep. You don't know what it could be, but when you finally go over there and lift the blanket up, you see the key card that you need uh-huh. right there. And then you get ambushed. How did that work out for you guys? Easy. It was only two people, I think. Yeah. It ain't no thing. Yeah. Perfect. It was fine. Perfect. I mean, I really wasn't expecting it, to be honest with you, but <laughs> it didn't like creep me out or anything. Okay. I was full heartedly I was wholeheartedly expecting something to jump out from underneath the thing. Yeah, I was wondering what they were gonna do, but then, then I would have shit my pants. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, it's the fucking man bat. <laughs> it's the uh... man. <laughs> <laughs> that got me so many times, dude. <laughs> Every single fucking time I was like, God damn it. <laughs> man bat so bad, man. man bat got me Fuck. really good. We also come across what, what did you think of this part, Pete? I mean, you obviously oh, remember yeah. it, but like, did it did it surprise you again? So I actually, I do remember parts of this game, but not everything because I played it so long ago. Like, I think I beat it back in 2012. I think that's when okay. I beat it. So you got a good chunk of time in between. Yeah, a solid chunk of time. In that room, I knew that something had to happen after I went and interacted with that. I just felt yeah. it was coming. Just that gamer intuition, yeah, knowing, yeah. oh, when I activate this, there's no way that nothing is going to happen around me. Right. The boss fight's going to start. <laughs> so really easy. Took them out pretty quickly and then moved on. Another part that I wanted to talk about in this section is the third time that you see Anna run through the hall. Mm-hmm. Guys, the third time you see Anna run through the hall, she stops, turns around, and says, Over here! And this moment was actually the first moment I took damage in my playthrough. Because I fell for it 
like a little fool. I completely fell for it. After she's done with her short segment, I walked forward, not even paying attention to the opening to the right of me. Uh, and when I finally turned it, there's a mysterious shadow just standing right there. And it straight grabbed onto me. I was like, oh, God, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I was able to get off and kill it. How did yeah. you guys do in this portion? I, uh, I immediately popped her in the face. So <laughs> didn't phase me. Yeah, I think I've only gotten grabbed like two or three times max. Call of Duty style, baby. Check the corners. Um, <laughs> I wasn't frosty. Thing. I was, I was way too warm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. I kind of hope that the. It's weird because I kind of hope that the enemies get a little tougher, but I'm also so fucked with like the controls that like I don't know if like harder enemies would be good or not. <laughs> like, I'd be. After this section, you have to find another key card. Once you find that key card, you can go into the lobby. And just as you're about to leave the hospital, Ivy shoots up and blocks the doorway. And three enemies appear. Yep. But they're not just any normal enemies. No, no, no. No, no, no. These enemies are wielding shotguns. Good. They're the first firearm armed enemies in the oh, game. For you. Tell me about this section for you. How was facing off against these enemies it was wonderful absolutely wonderful did it about six times it was great <laughs> it was it actually wasn't that bad it kind of like freaked me out when they started charging their shots they can charge their shots and i was like yo i don't know what's happening that's right you can clearly know. see them charging up their blasts before they pull yeah. it off but they're not hard to they're not hard to kill as soon as you hit them like in the upper thing they get like they get stunned and then you can just shoot them in the face and good John, I, I I didn't have problems the first time I did this. The second time I got shot one time, I didn't know what was going on. So uh, I didn't realize that they had guns that they were shooting at you because uh, they kind of come at you the same way that the people like the uh, shovels or the, the other shit do where they have like their arm up. But, you know, they do charge. But I the first time, like I said, I killed them pretty easily. Second time, the, I was the like, first time John killed them so fast that he didn't even know they had shotguns. He was like, "What?" <laughs> He's like, "Get out of here!" <laughs> it was not bad. It was all right. Uh, why did you guys have to do it over again? Because after you run towards uh, where you need to go, the game just takes a big old poop. <laughs> Shits yes. all over us. So this is uh, are we transitioning to John's? No, 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 oh, no, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. <laughs> Well, it has a lot to do with the optimization of this port. Yes. And if yep. you run it in regular Windows 10 mode, at this part, right after you finish it and grab all the items that they drop, and it transitions to the next scene, it will... You have a chance of it crashing. Because I ran it in Windows 10, and it and it went to the cutscene oh, okay. perfectly fine. Oh, it must be nice. To be yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not to say that this game didn't brick my computer the first time I tried to launch it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it straight up black screened the right my right monitor, and I had to restart my computer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely had my issue, but yeah, cutscene begins. Mm -hmm. York is just trying to smoke a cigarette in a hospital. It's respectful, but he's just trying to smoke a cigarette. And Sheriff Woodman calls him out, and we get to meet two new characters. This moment, <laughs> Pro Professor X, and, Professor uh, X, <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> and Cyclops, exactly. <laughs> you meet Harry Stewart. He's a capitalist in the town. He basically owns the town because his father started up the lumber trade. And you meet his aide, Michael Tillotson. I love this duo only for the way that Harry Stewart, or should I say Mr. Stewart, yeah. talk, talks to you. The way that Mr. Stewart talks... He doesn't talk directly to anybody because he had <clears throat> he's in a wheelchair, which is why we made the Professor X comparison. Yeah. But he has this like weird psychomantis gas mask on his mm -hmm. face. You can't hear what he says. All he does is he leans over, Mr. Stewart whispers something to him, to which Michael then speaks to who he needs to speak to. And after he's done, he ends his statement with the tagline. 
So says Mr. Stu. There's more of this to come, guys. There's more oh, of this great. to come. Great. <clears throat> Love it. One of the one of the best lines is York asks them, How did you know my name? They give the most broad answer, the most broad <laughs> generic answer that doesn't answer anything to him, which is Mr. Francis York Morgan. Information desires you, just as you desire information too. So says Mr. Stewart. I just want to say, <laughs> he rhymes every single time he talks, I'm pretty sure. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure. Mr. Francis York Morgan, with each rain our town goes mad. To our disdain, unpreventable. So sad. So says Mr. Stewart. Thanks for the warning. Oh, he does rhyme. He does wow. rhyme. What's up, baby? Yeah. So wait, wait. It's not Michael who's rhyming. It's Mr. Stewart. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if that's why he like takes so long to respond because he has to think of the rhyme in his head. And he goes, yeah, oh, "This is play. fucking good. This is good." That's why. Again, so says Mr. Stewart. I think when I was streaming, I said, "This is fucking Dr. Seuss." <laughs> and then the cutscene ends with Emily letting you know that they lined up the first witnesses to the crime scene and that you can meet them. And York says, thank you. And we have reached the end of chapter three, which also means the end of our first episode. Woo! We did it, boys. We did it. We did it. So we're going to transition right over into John's premonition of frustration. Hold on. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Oh, where do I begin? So, so I start the game, uh, which naturally starts in full screen mode. When doing so, because <clears throat> I want to stream this game, I want to stream the portion which I am streaming it, and you can watch me uh, on Twitch. I am Johnny Bigodnuts, Johnny underscore Uh Go ahead, and follow me. You can watch the rest of this. It's fun. It's a good time. Uh, <clears throat> so I have my OBS up on my right screen, all my shit up on my right screen. I open the game. It goes full screen on my left screen. Anything that I had up on my left screen gets pushed over to my right screen for some reason. I go, that's weird. Okay. I go to change shit on my OBS to try to, you know, screen capture my game. And it immediately takes the game out and then moves everything from my right screen over to my left screen. So I'm like, this is weird. Anytime I have the game up, it pushes everything to my right screen. Anytime I touch anything, my right screen it takes the game down, pushes everything onto my left screen. Doesn't make any sense. Try a whole bunch of shit. Not nah, doesn't work. Read up. Figured that uh, I have to play in windowed mode because it won't do that. Oh, sure. Fine. Window mode. Mind you, window mode brings up maybe a I'm, I'm trying to figure it out now. Maybe like a three by five inch screen <laughs> on my window that i can't make any bigger Oof. getting pissed off about that because i don't want to play this game in a very small window <clears throat> so finally end up deciding to to go ahead and do that just swallow my pride and say i'm just gonna do this it'll be fun still i'll, I'll stream it it's gonna be goofy it'll be fine start the game up the minute i'm able to take control of the character my controller for some reason, don't know why, when the right thumbstick, <laughs> where normally, you know, up is up, down is down, maybe you have inverted controls. <laughs> Left and right make the the uh, viewpoint go up and down, and up and down make it go left and right. For no reason whatsoever. Yikes. No clue. That's not So, fun. yeah. So, I, it's like, it's completely ridiculous to try to control anything with a camera or, God forbid, aim with your gun. Um, so I'm trying to figure all this out. Mind you, on stream, you can actually go watch the videos on there. It's pretty funny. I think I had two hours in game on my Steam when I looked at it. It said I had two hours played of this game where I haven't I had played maybe five minutes of the actual game. Ended up having to open up the game in uh what is it called? Uh big, big picture window mode? Big, big picture, picture mode, yeah. Steam's big picture mode. You, when you put your controller in, it goes into like a controller mode for the right. You have to go to the game, go to the controller setup. I found 
thank God, a controller set up from the community that fixes the right stick issue. It fixed it. It moved some of the buttons around. So, like, the triggers were actually the, the shoulder buttons. Like, whatever the natural shoulder buttons were, it moved it to the to the um, the triggers, which I found to be very helpful with, like, aiming. Because it's just pull the left trigger, and you can, like, aim, right trigger, fire, just like any normal, you know, like, first-person shooter or anything like that. So, I'm play- I am play through the whole thing, the whole section. I'm like, oh, this is, like, I can act. It felt so good to, like, and I can't, I, I feel like I'm I'm brushing over this as if it took this amount of time to figure out everything that happened. No, this took a very long time to try to figure this out. It was so freaking annoying. Um, so, I play through the whole section, get to the end, game crashes. Oh, perfect. Awesome. This is great. I knew that Devon had an issue with it. So, I go. All right, because uh, the, the whole time when trying to figure out the, the windowed mode versus the non-windowed, and even with the controller setup, I was going through the Windows 10 version to, the, like, the XP to, like, Windows 8 to just try to find a version that would maybe be fine with the controller setup. Mm-hmm. Nothing did, so I ended up just playing it in the Windows 10 version. Crashes. Didn't save it to, like, this as close as I wanted to because I skipped some save points, so I had to go back. And what I did was I had to put it in Windows 8 mode, which for some reason now messed up the controller <laughs> part from what I changed it to. So I now had to go back and put it back to the regular controller, <laughs> which reverted everything back to the normal like shoulder right. buttons and everything like that. Um, even though I tried doing that stuff and it didn't work with when I originally tried to fix the controls. So now I have to like I have different controls that I'm used to. Going through the game again, like it was luckily like at the beginning of like that last hallway sequence where you're going through. So it wasn't too bad, but I had to go back through everything and then um, could finally finish the part and be done with it. And I'm going to maybe go through and just see how I can fix it. I might just leave it the way it is right now and just try to play through the game with the the controls the way they're set up. But forgot to say, when I went to the new gamepad mode, the site i can only go up so far it doesn't let me get like headshots so like <laughs> i could lock on to somebody and then like aim up and it would go to like their chest and i was like you gotta be kidding me <laughs> it's like if i'm far enough away like whatever the height is i could hit the headshots but if they're cl- close just shooting them in the chest you just no play problem. keyboard mouse <laughs> i'm just like i can't get a fucking break in this game <laughs> it's just like there's so much shit that went down with it and it was just like at very first all that shit went down and it sucked and then I finally got through it. I was like, thank God. And then it, it shit the bed again. And I was just like, I, I'm not letting it affect the actual game. It's just like the fucking port of it is just so bad. It's so bad. That's the end of it. So far. Who knows? All Maybe right. episode two will continue it. We'll continue it. <laughs> Devon, Devon, close out that segment. <laughs> Even with all that. Do you guys at least want to play more to figure out what's going Hell on? Yeah. Are you are you intrigued by the story? I'm very intrigued. I'm somewhat intrigued. I'm not gonna lie, like I was I was happy being done with this portion, but like I do think a lot of it was because of my frustration. I'm mm-hmm. just like I just want to be done. Maybe with some days in between, some distance from the game. Some I can and, and, and with it <laughs> but just with it being like fresh and if it goes in and everything's fine just playing it i can actually go in without having to think of any annoyances i think it'll be better i hope so because i want you guys to understand like why i cherish this game so much like this is one of the games where when i finished it it had me feeling some type of way really yeah oh yeah That's weird okay. so i don't this know game, how you're gonna get to this point but okay i'm, I'm intrigued this game holds a special place in my heart Hope you guys do enjoy it, and I hope you guys... So what, what did you think replaying it? What replaying it? I loved it. Not only yeah. did I replay it on PC, I have the PS3 copy of the director's mm-hmm. cut, and I replayed it on the PS3. But I mean, like, is it like, are you finding anything new this time so far, or is it just I'm like curious to watching see... a movie that you, you know, you've watched a bunch of times? Yeah, Kind of like watching a movie that you really like, Mm-hmm. And when you go back to it, you still enjoy it. But it's also cool because I've always wanted to replay this game, but I ha- I've never had a reason to, and I've never just sat down to do it. So yeah. this is the perfect way to do it. 
I'm sorry to drag you through the awful port, but I can't wait for you guys to experience the story and the characters and the quirkiness of it all. It's just Pumped. a game that you'll never see made again. Okay. There'll never be there'll never be anything like this game <laughs> ever again. For better or for worse, you know? Uh-huh. Whichever whichever way you want to take it. Right. It's diving back into it. The characters are just as great as I remember. The gameplay segments, yeah, not the tightest gameplay, but mm-hmm. it's serviceable and it gets the job done. Great to oh. jump in. Yeah. Great to give it another shot. We didn't talk about the music this time, but I promise we'll talk about that next time. Because yeah. I still I still love the music. I still love the music. It's so I like the soundtrack as well. That so. Bon Jovi music <laughs> they got at certain points is just uh <laughs> it's great. It's so different. Here's the thing about this music, right? <clears throat> this music will stick with you. This is music that when you play video games in the future, this music will stay in your mind and you'll think deadly premonition soundtrack whether you think it's bad great whatever it'll stick with you whereas so many video game soundtracks today they're just so forgettable uh-huh. right they're so forgettable well, what Where, i'll say is that i probably won't remember the exact <clears throat> like tune of this music i'll remember the ridiculousness of it <laughs> and like certain being like i remember again like when you enter the hospital, they have like this Bon Jovi esque like acu- electric acoustic guitar like playing. <laughs> I was just like, this sounds like the beginning of a Bon Jovi song. Like, <laughs> um, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, well, Pete knows la, it. So. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, you'll remember at least one song, oh. and that's. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can do that. Oh, Devon, you hey. excited? You excited for the next I'm, part? I'm excited. To, I want. I want to see more. Like I want to know <laughs> what more happens in. Yeah. This. What What is the next part? The that next part that we're playing to is to the end of episode one. Okay. How many uh, chapters in episode one? There are seven. It okay. is nice. I think th- this is very structured towards this this podcast here. Yeah. You can totally end it after a chapter. That's that's nice. I like that. Uh, the reason why we wanted to talk about what we're playing up to next is not just for our sakes. It's for yours. Everyone listening or watching, Ooh. it's for you because <laughs> you can play the game along with us. That sounds like fun. I know it does, and I know you want to do it. After listening to this whole thing, you're saying, yeah, I want to get to the point that they played, and I want to discuss this with them. And you can if you join our Discord, which is in the description of the listening platform you are using, or the YouTube description if you're watching the video. So definitely do that. Head on over. You can submit any questions you want, and we will address them on the podcast. All right? We will address them here. We will discuss them. And we will talk back and forth with you in the Discord. You know, I'll go so far, too, as to say, if you don't want to play it, you can watch one of us play it because we stream it on either the Black and White Gaming channel or our own personal uh, channels. So even if you just like, you know, I don't really feel like playing it, but I want to watch it and listen to it. And I still have questions about stuff. Go watch one of our streams. Then you can listen to it. You can still keep up with it. Perfect. You also have so many options to follow us. So you can do that on Twitter or Instagram or Twitch. You can go to BLKWHT Gaming for any of those three. If you want to reach out to us privately, feel free to email us at BLKWHTGaming at gmail.com. And you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, trigger the bells. You can do all that fun stuff. (laughs) And you can come back and listen to us again. And you can interact with us. We will interact with you. Feel free to reach out at any time. But that is it for our first episode of the game club for this second season with deadly premonition (laughs) boys we're here we started we're back again i know you guys enjoyed the break but it's time to get down it's time to get down it's time to get deadly and it's time to start having premonitions (laughs) all right (laughs) 
We look forward to seeing everyone for episode two. I'm Peter, your host, your moderator, and I'm joined with my best friends, Johnny Bag of Donuts. Hey! <laughs> and the Colbert 12, aka the real Kratos, and so many other names. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I hate that you got the real Kratos to stick, you motherfucker. <laughs> I did it. I told you. It'll never stick. Here it is, baby. Oh. Oh. We made it. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.